Can we call the meeting to order, please? Everyone take their seats. Okay. Can we have roll call, Mrs. Campbell? Mr. Hannigan? Here. Mrs. Heinz? Here. Mr. Derman? Here. Mr. Loop? Here. Mr. Harrell? Here. Mrs. Tipton? Here. Mr. Jeter? Mrs. Seeley? Here. Mr. Betancourt? Here. Mr. Womack? Here. Mr. Panks? Mr. Lamar? Here. Mr. Alfred? Mrs. Belisario? Here. Mrs. Mullen? Present. Thank you. And um, thank you, everyone. I didn't even say a welcome. Welcome to the committee as a whole meeting September 4th for Human Resources and Education. And Mrs. Hines, would you please lead us in the invocation and pledge? Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity to share in the educational lives of our students and families in St. Tammany Parish. This evening, we ask that you guide us in our decision making. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mrs. Heinz. Okay, we do have uh, one person that signed up for three minutes for the um, for on the agenda, requesting time. Mrs. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Lee Berrios. Lee Berrios, retired teacher. <clears throat> I try my best when I come up here and when I speak to other groups outside of the district to talk about how great St. Tammany Parish school system is because I know it is. I worked here and I know how hard the school board has been working to fight the reforms of the last few years. Since Race to the Top, the school board has made their position clear about the direction they wanted this district to take with regard to some of the strengths attached to Race to the Top. One of those strengths was a mandate to adopt a set of common standards. Fast forward September 30th, 2013. The school board passed a resolution unanimously to tell the state they did not want to participate in Common Core standards. All last year, administration and teachers were struggling to address the mandated standards with no clear direction from the state. In fact, the state said as a cop-out, it was up to districts to write their own curriculum aligned with Common Core. Parents brought their concerns both in this public forum and in meetings with administration. At parents' request, the curriculum was posted on the district website this year. It states, and parents were told, that St. Tammany was using its guaranteed curriculum. I trusted that until parents and teachers continued to claim their children were be being taught the Common Core. So I pulled up the seventh grade ELA curriculum, which I had assisted in writing and which I taught, that was posted on the website. What I discovered, to my horror, was that the framework of the guaranteed curriculum was retained with its synopsis of the unit, its enduring understandings, and essential questions, but the guaranteed curriculum itself was replaced word for word with the Common Core standards. Standards are not curriculum. It's not a curriculum. It's a list of standards, and they're Common Core. Then I met with some algebra teachers. They gave me this worksheet set which was sent home with every student to be used as homework and practice work. And they shared the curriculum, which is scripted minute by minute lesson plans. They discovered by going to the Engage New York website that it is Engage New York, also known as Eureka Math, also known as Common Core Aligned Curriculum. It also happens to be the only math curriculum that our state superintendent has approved. Engage New York was created by a company called Common Core Incorporated under contract. Common Core Incorporated named it Eureka Math and sold it the Eureka Math, it sells the Eureka Math books and resources. New York renamed it Engage New York to make it their own. So I'm sure parents would think that it was not the Common Core curriculum. Superintendent White insists on presenting to the public that Eureka Math was written by the LSU Kane Center. Anybody can look at the commoncore.org website and see that is not true. 
So what am I asking for here? First of all, teachers need to have a safe venue to express their concerns with school board and administration. They are scared. So many have told me they've lost their tenure. They've been rated ineffective based on, and I'm speaking again at, in particular about the algebra teachers, on the two district tests that they say were written by the districts. When their children take the end of course tests for the same course, they would have made a four or highly effective. There's something wrong there. Secondly, parents need administration to be completely honest with them about the curriculum. Thirdly, ultimately parents and many teachers want to pull out of engaged New York math curriculum. And lastly, parents and teachers want to be confident that they can openly address curriculum concerns with their parents, with their teachers, and with their schools and administration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barrios. Okay, moving on. Approval of the minutes uh, for the committee as a whole that uh, was that was held on August seventh, two thousand and fourteen. Do I have a motion to accept those minutes? Do I have a okay? I have a motion by Mr. Betancourt and a second by Ms. Cecily. Any questions by board members? Comments by the public? <coughs> Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? One abstention from Mrs. Beria, uh, Mrs. Belisario. Mm. Sorry. Please. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda we have uh, human resources. We have Mr. Jabia with some revisions to policies. Mr. Thank Jabia. Thank you, Ms. Mullet. Good evening, board members. Uh, tonight I have three policies that were included in your, your mail out uh, to you. Uh, they're changing because of various reasons, and I'll go through each one. I'll start with the tobacco-free schools, our policy statement. We sent to you the current policy and then one that says revise and tried to highlight what we were doing. As you recall, a few months ago, this board uh, adopted some policy regarding the student handbook and the use of e-cigarettes and, and tobacco-like products, and those are now banned. Uh, so we need to revise our policy for our employees to reflect the same thing. And Ms. Muller, I'll ask if you want to do one policy at a time or let me go through all three. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the... Uh, okay. Second. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Uh, Derman, second by Mrs. Heinz. Uh, any questions by board members? Comments from the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Okay, that motion Thank carries. Thank you. The next policy is the handling body fluids. Our current policy has part in there where a stream of running water and washing your hands for 10 seconds or longer. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention is now recommending that that 10 seconds be 20 seconds, and we would like to change it to that. Okay, do I have a, a motion for the handling? Okay. Mr. Womack, a second? Mrs. Tipton, any comments from board members? Any comments from the public? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. And the last policy is the drug-free workplace policy. The current policy says that if you're convicted of a criminal, criminal drug statute occurring in the workplace, it has to be done within five days. The new law has changed that to 48 hours. So we'd like to change that from five days to 48 hours. Second. Okay. I have a motion to accept this uh, tobacco free school policy statement by Mr. Luke, seconded by Mrs. Seeley. Drug work free. Drug, I'm, I'm sorry, drug free. Oh. Yes, drug free workplace. Drug free. Okay, sorry. Um, by Mr. Luke, seconded by Mrs. Seeley. Any comments from board members or questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Jabby, like what in the what about the case of a, a a Friday conviction? The 48 hours would be Saturday and Sunday. Is there a way of them notifying? A Usually, proper those authority? types of things are like work hours. Uh huh. Okay. 
So the next work uh, available work day would be that Monday. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Mr. Hennigan. Thank you. So if you uh, have an issue outside of the school system, is it still the 48 hours? Yes, sir. Okay. It just brings it in line with what the current law is. It's any conviction is 48 hours. So it's so what this what this says violation occurring in the workplace no later than 48 hours. We have another policy though that talks about all other convictions. Okay. okay. This right. was just the only one that was out of line. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions by board members? Any comments from the public? All those in favor? All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jabia. Next on the agenda, we have Mrs. Araby with um, our the tr excuse me, the strategic plan. Mrs. Mrs. Araby. Okay. Good evening. It's that time of year again where we present our district strategic plan. A little change this year, it's hard to believe, but it has now come to the end of our sixth year for our current district strategic plan. So we, as we mentioned earlier, as we presented in March, that it would be time for us to go through the process and to revisit our plan. It also just happens to be a very important time for our reaccreditation through advanced ed. So we are going to blend those processes together in using those standards. So as a reminder, you see that our strategy for building capacity, it is going to have the same framework with our four task core areas. And you can see that each of these will be used as we move forward. Shared beliefs, results for our customers, design resources, and culture of improvement. With these, as we go through the process, we're going to gather new information, reflect, and then put this information together, and probably what we'll begin to see are some new indicators as we go through this process. First of all, a review of our shared beliefs. We are a good school system, and we must strive to be a great school system. High quality schools and exemplary student achievement are the responsibility of the entire community. Effective instruction must meet the needs of all students so that every child can learn at expected high levels. Student engagement is the key to learning. Teachers are leaders and designers who create engaging work for students and our core business is to create engaging work for every student every day. Therefore, we make a commitment with our community to engage all students in high quality education, resulting in lifelong learners who can contribute to the society in which they live. Save the date. We've given you this date a couple of times. You'll see this date a few more times. But March 2nd through 4th, 2015 will be the time that this advanced ed team will be within our community within our schools to view what we have going on in our school system. This is the process. Our advanced ed district re uh, reaccreditation required components. We'll have an executive summary. It's about us. We'll have a self-assessment, which is our standards ratings. We'll have our student performance diagnostic, which is, of course, our data analysis. We'll have our Improvement Plan Stakeholder Diagnostic, which is going to be our SIP, School Improvement Plans, which will be at each school. And we always have had this. Stakeholder Feedback Diagnostic is our surveys. So what are we doing to ensure that this is getting into each of the schools, to our teachers, to our parents, and then to our community? This will be rolled out at each of the principal meetings. Just this past week, we had our September principals meeting where we reviewed standard one, standard two, and standard four. 
This is done in small groups with each of the different grade groups. And then principals leave with the toolkit. And the expectation is that they'll go back to their schools, share with their staff and faculty, and gather information and data. In October, at our principals meeting, we will be reflecting on Standard 3 and Standard 5. This process worked extremely well the first time uh, we went through this or the last time that we went through this and so that process is still in place in gathering of the information and ensuring that all of our people are part of it in the feedback. Surveys, you did have these surveys at your desk at the last board meeting. The parent survey has been completed and this was through August 11th through the 29th. This was done in the form of paper, a paper survey. The staff actually took the survey online through our Safe Schools program that we have available, another way we were able to use it, and they took this during their professional development days at the start of school. Now we're in the process of the student surveys. With the student surveys, parents were sent a letter, those letters did go out this week, or schools depending on when is the best day for them to send their information out. They can be sent from September 3rd through September 12th for parents to opt out. We have encouraged all of the schools to put this up on their websites to make this very well known so that parents will know that they certainly have an opportunity to opt their children out. September 15th through October 2nd is the administering of the paper survey. There are three different surveys based on the grade level that the child is in. These surveys are at the schools. We've encouraged principals, and it also says this in the parent op letter, if they want to see this survey, absolutely, they can get in touch with their school, and as always, they can get in touch with us up here at central office and we'll be glad to assist them with that. Now once all these surveys and all that information comes in, this is what gives us the additional data in order to revise our stri strategic plan. So for the future with this, what we'll hold is stakeholders input as we showed you with the surveys included and certainly community input meetings. We see that some of these meetings will be as we move forward with our leadership teams on the East Chamber and the West Chamber and many of the connections and relations that we have built with many of the outside communities due to the many uh, themes that we've had over the past couple of years. That's how we'll be getting much of that community input. And then as we get that input, all of the different ways, then we'll begin to review our shared beliefs. We'll look at our district performance review, and then we will look at the district standards assessment, which certainly with all of this data, that will give us great information in order to compile it. And then we will have our review, evidence of progress, and we'll also redesign our focus activities. And this is probably the area that we're going to see the biggest changes in our distri district strategic plan are those indicators, that part of the action plan of how are we going to continue to move forward and get there and continue with the great success that we have had as a school system. So in closing, that's the process. It is going to be very important. We'll have all this compiled as schools continue to send this in. We will put this information into our folder and then have it ready uh, to compile the big project that they will be looking for because what they're going to be looking for, this team, when they come March 2nd to 4th, they're going to look at is what we put in, in our project and our action plan, is it actually going on within our community? Is it actually seen as they walk our school campuses? That completes my presentation on the advanced ed reaccreditation. Thank you, Mrs. Araby. Do we have any questions from board members? Let me get that. Mr. Betancourt. Thank you, Ms. Muller. Ms. Araby. How will the uh, opting out affect our potential reaccreditation? 
Well, we need a, a certain percentage. We at this point in time, we did we have not had an issue with that with the parents. We'll just have to visit that when the time comes as far as the participation. They, I have been, I have called Advanced Ed myself to uh, just to ask them if they've been involved with some of the new trends and the concerns that are out there in the way of data and told them that we would do the best in our school system to meet the percentage that is required. I think once we get this information in, we'll look at that percentage and then it may be that we'll have to have a conversation with the advanced ed team at that time. Do you know what the percentage is? For students, I believe it is in the way of 60% through the, yeah, yeah. And that would be, it's through the district. Um, at each school, it was a 20% as far as in parent participation, and we've met that. And <clears throat> just out of curiosity, is is that in the opt-out letter or explaining to a parent like the letter a was certain certainly amount of written by our great Meredith Mendez, and so that information in there is the importance of the participation okay. in order to be able to go through and meet the accreditation as a district. We talk about that in that letter. And actually, when you received your packet with all the surveys, a copy of that letter was included. And if you'd like, I could certainly forward another copy of that letter to you so you could see that. Okay, thank you. Very welcome. Mr. Hennigan. Thank you. Ms. Araby, the survey, is this an advanced ed survey? So yes, it is. Ed. It's provided by advanced ed, and actually you had options in completing it. You could have had the students completed online, and we just knew certainly with uh, technology and concern with data, we believed it was best for us to proceed in the way of paper and pencil, <laughs> and so that's what we've done. Thank you. You know, we, there have been some attempts to push some surveys on us that we didn't feel met our kind of standards. Absolutely. You guys have looked at this. Absolutely. And, and we are very, very cautious with that. They always, they come through me, I'll go to Trey. We turned down many, many surveys. Many surveys. surveys. Yeah, Absolutely. make sure it was coming good. <laughs> yes. Thank yes. you. Mrs. Heinz. Ms. Arby, are any of our supervisors currently serving on any advanced ed teams? I know sometimes yes a bit, um, we have actually had uh, men I would say a few of our su supervisors who were on teams last year mm -hmm. we do have some actually Amy DiCarlo was going to be on the St. Charles visit in January she and Amy Woosner are actually our go-to people for this process and they've done a great job so far in the organization and the rolling out so yes ma'am it's very important because we know as we go on some of these visits that it's a learning experience for us going through the process and really looking at another district do we know um, of any districts that will come and be a part of our advanced ed team here in Louis uh, louisiana not not at this time they're in the process of getting those teams together we're really hopeful that st charles which we know they probably would want to be on that team because they like to see what we're doing as right. we like to see what they're doing but um they also really for these types of visits they really do try to go outside of the state so it until the time gets closer we'll cer certainly bring that information back to you well and i remember meeting some of the teams in the past and it's a you know a variety of States, Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. but there's usually one or two representatives from within the state. So, just curious. Yes. Thank you so much for the update. Okay. Any other questions from board members? Okay, Mrs. Araby, I think you're still on with the uh, revisions to the pupil progression plan. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this has to do with the change you may remember when we were going through the pupil progression plan process as well as with the revisions in our pupil progression plan and we brought it to the board in July for the vote that we did tell you at that time with many of the changes at the state that we did believe that we would have updates as we go through this school year not totally unusual for us to have changes and updates during the year we just believe that there's going to be a few committee as a whole meetings that will be bringing some changes to you as the changes are made at the state so this one that has come 
um, from the state in the last couple of weeks has to do with um, changes in the state policy for awarding Carnegie credit and we are proposing the following change. The old policy that we had had to do with EOC for proficiency and it's in page 46 of the pupil progression plan is found on our website. If a student scores an excellent or good on the end of course test and fails the subject, he or she can earn a P in the course. If a student scores fair on the end of course test and fails either semester or the entire course, the principal will use a rubric to determine if he or she can earn a P in the course. That's what was suggested to us. I will tell you this is what many of our principals who served on the committee thought would be a, a good way for us to address this. Since then, we've had to make a, a revision because of state policy. The revision would be a student who has passed the end of course exam in Algebra 1, Geometry, English 2, English 3, Biology, and U.S. History and has failed the subject area course can obtain credit for the course by one of the following. Successful completion of the online credit recovery course, the maximum possible for this option is a grade of C. The original grade will remain on the school transcript, high school transcript. Number two, successful completion of the repeated course during the school year or summer school, the maximum possible for this option is a grade of an A. The original grade will remain on the high school transcript. So you can see in number two, that's if they repeat the entire course, then they have the possibility of earning higher than a C. If they choose to do the credit recovery, C is the highest that they can obtain. And, but in both cases, the original grade remains on their transcript. And if I, you have a really hard question, Denise Parker is here to answer okay. it. Okay. I'm going to, um, do we need a motion first, Terry? Yes. Yes. Don't we need a motion first? I, I, I do need a motion to accept these changes in a second first before. Second. Okay. I have a motion by Mrs. Seely and seconded by Mrs. Belisario. Now I'll call for questions. Mrs. Seely, you had a question? Thank you, Ms. Mullen. I'm sorry about the voice. Ms. Araby, um, I understand that the original grade stays on the record. <clears throat> My question is, I know I'll be questioned with this also. In number one's instance, so you have a failing grade on that, that transcript, and then say you, you get your C. That is a D average, so do they average it together, or do both grades show on this transcript? And that's the same question that I have for for Both uh, grades number two. Will show on the transcript. Are they averaged together at all? Or well, it, they will be listed s separately. I'll let Denise. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Um, what will happen is they both uh, will be on the grade, and when they um, average um, the student to get their GPA, everything will be averaged in. Yeah. So they, yes, both of them will be averaged in, but only at the end, the total GPA is <coughs> when you're going to see. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harrell. That was my question. Mrs. Belisaria. Um, under the online credit recovery, I'm just a little uh, foggy on this. Can they get that through our uh, online courses, or do they have to go through the state? They will get, they will get those on our they online. Can use ours. They are nine week courses. So since they're shortened courses, that's why the difference in grade and getting the grade of the C and being able to get the grade of the A when you do the whole semester course over. Do we have any other questions from board members regarding this? Any comments from the public? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? And this motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Araby. Okay. That was the end of the agenda item, so this meeting is adjourned. We'll start the next one in five minutes. <laughs>
Okay, let's call this meeting to order for the St. Tanny Parish School Board Committee as a whole meeting September 4, 2014, Business Affairs and Administrative. Uh, Ms. Campbell, roll call, please. Mr. Derman? Here. Mr. Hannigan? Here. Mrs. Heinz? Here. Mr. Loop? Here. Mr. Harrell? Here. Mrs. Tipton? Here. Mr. Jeter? Here. Mrs. Seeley? Here. Mrs. Mullet? Present. Mr. Betancourt? Here. Mr. Womack? Here. Mr. Panks? Here. Mr. Lamarck? Here. Mr. Alfred? Mrs. Belisario. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Uh, we're going to dispense with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance as that was done in our previous meeting. Uh, no one has requested time on the agenda, so we're going to move to item four, which is approval of the minutes for a committee as a whole meeting held August 7, 2014. Do I have a motion, please? Move. Moved by Ms. Sealing. Second. Second by Mr. Betancourt. Any comments or questions by board members? By the public? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Number five is Mr. Foltz. I'm sorry? One, one abstention. I'm sorry, one abstention. Um, item five, and Mr. Foltz uh, recommends the acceptance of the final revised budgets for the fiscal year 2013-2014. Mr. Foltz. Thank you, Mr. Derman. As in your pack tonight, you had the final, final revised budget that takes care of fiscal year 2013-14. All the numbers are in and all are complete, and that's the document that you see in front of you um, in your packet for tonight that we'd ask approval on. Okay, so I do have a motion to accept approval of the 2013-14 fiscal year budget. Second. Motion by Ms. Mullet. Second. Second. By Ms. Tipton. Any questions or comments by board members? From the public? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Derman. Item um, 5B is consideration of our proposed budget for fiscal year 2014-15. I'm going to ask Ms. Araby to share with you uh, some of the same slides that we shared at the public hearing and then certainly open it up for um, any questions that you may have. Thank you. And this is in reference to our 2014-2015 general fund budget. As you can see, what we are showing here is our original budget for the 14-15 year and the differences from our final budget that you um, now have at your seats. You can see also that the total revenues for our new year and the projection are going to be in around $390 million, close to $391 million. You can see that our local revenues are resulting in about $181 million and our state revenues in $209.5 million, with federal being about a half million. We're projecting increases in our revenues and our sales tax, as we have mentioned before, uh, that our sales tax did give us a great result last year and we do believe that for this year that with that increase of 2.5 <coughs> conservatively that we will be in good shape with our sales tax. Our ad valorem this is an increase of three million and that is as a result of what the projected tax roll has been for this year. So as you can see in both of those areas this is pretty much a result of what we did receive last year. We believe that with the sales tax being as well as it was that eventually it is going to reach that flat line but we're very hopeful with that and the ad valorem that we'll be looking at both of those together five and a half million dollar increase. Our MFP, three and a half million dollar increase, this does have to do with the increase of students as well as the growth of a hundred dollars, the increase in the MFP, a hundred dollars per student is what that uh, formula will hold for this year. Increases in expenditures. You will remember that there were raises given to all employees 
for our certificated, it was $775 for the year. And then there will also be that stipend for our highly effective teachers of $500 that will be paid later this year. And the way of retirement, this is the, a statement that we get or a bill that we get from the state and it is going to be an increase of two and a half million dollars. This is also an increase in our expenditures. Another increase in our expenditures that you will see in our budget has to do with our pre-K program. You as the board have continued to show or to express your concerns to be able to get to a point that any of our pre-K students who qualify for the pre-K program, that they would indeed be able to enroll in that program. What we did was we looked at our waiting list from last year and what we, what we looking at that data and analyzing that, we decided that if we could pay for five pre-K teachers and five paras out of our general fund budget, that that would give the possibility of all students in St. Tammany Parish who qualify with that free and reduced lunch to attend our LA4 pre-K program. And so we were very pleased to be able to do that for this year. So that is what we would consider would have been another big increase in our general fund budget. So in closing, the general fund budget for this year, the figures that will stay in our head, and that I know my staff, they're tired of hearing this, is right around $392 million for the new school year. Okay, thank you, Ms. Harry. Mr. Foles. Mr. Jabby, go over briefly with the board the um, pay raise for the teachers, if you would, touching on how the 775 is determined as well as the, uh, and how that's in the base as well as the 500 stipend. I think there's been a little confusion on that yes sir uh, our salary schedule was made up of, of different criteria and uh, one of the things that we had in the MFP last year was the funding that we got a one-time what we called a one-time stipend from the state and uh, it came out to be seven hundred and seventy four dollars for teachers and the uh, the legislation this year passed with the MFP said that the raise if we were going to give a raise it had to be more or equal to what we gave last year. So with that figure in mind, and we got the additional funding from the state, the teacher's uh, increase was $775. Now, in order to get the $775, the teacher had to have an effective rating. It could have been emerging, effective, proficient effective, or highly effective. Any one of those three and they automatically get the $775. So the majority of our teachers are receiving the $775. Another, another part of that was for a master's degree was an additional $275, which will not come into effect until next year. And if they get an effective rating and get their master's degree during the course of this year, there'll be another $275 added to their salary for the following year. The other part of the pay raise was in the form of a one-time stipend. And let me go back and say that the 775 becomes a part of their base. They took what they made last year, they add the 775, and that gives them a new base. There was also a stipend of $500. If you had a rating of highly effective, that, that $500 stipend will be issued in the month of November in a one-time check and will not be part of their base. It will not be part of their base. So the 775 will be part of their base, the 500 will not be, but almost 99.9% .9 of our teachers are receiving the $775 because they had an effective rating. On the non-certificated side, that pay raise with the funds that was available, we were able to recommend to you and you approved a $400 pay raise and all of those employees will get that $400 pay raise this year. Mr. Jebby, the, the categories, the effective, emerging, all that, those are set by the state, correct? Yes, sir. There's ineffective, <coughs> the next one is emerging, the next one is proficient, and the next one is highly. Thank you. Uh, if I may get a motion on this and then uh, so. ask, ask uh, the board members uh, if they have any questions or comments. Ms. Heinz makes motion. 
Second by Mr. Liu. Okay. Um, Ms. Heinz. I had a, a couple of comments. Or, or, um, first of all, I wanted to say that I appreciated the opportunity to meet with Ms. Araby and Ms. Prevost on the budget. It was very helpful. And I also appreciated that last year we had an ongoing review of the budget. And I'm assuming we'll do that this year because it helps us to all stay on track. And I appreciate that. Um, I was curious. Um, I know that our increase in students uh, increases our MFP. And I realize that that might be based on last year. But Mr. Jabby, I was wondering if you were willing to tell us if we've had any increase in students this year. Oh, you putting you putting him on the spot. I know. No. Put, I you know, know we I'm haven't had the official. You know, I'm going to be real iffy on this because <laughs> <laughs> we don't have official numbers yet, but we're looking in the range conservatively of about 200 or so. Okay. And I think that's about what we projected in the budget for growth. All right. And that's as last Friday. Last Friday we took a uh, no, sir. Uh, we took account the day after a Labor Day. Correct. Tuesday. And, and it's compared to last year at the same time the day after Labor Day. Uh -huh. Yeah, we and compare what the count was the day after Labor Day last year as to what it is this year, the day after Labor Day, and that's showing approximately 200 okay. growth. Okay, and I, I know that's not official and right. we don't have to turn it into the state yet, but I was curious. Uh, and then I want to say that I'm very pleased that we can add these pre-K classes. I think that's something the board has felt like was very important. We know that our community feels like it's very important, and we know that um, it, it will help our students in the long run. So I'm very pleased that we will be able to do that in our budget. Thank you, Ms. Saints. Uh, Ron. Thank you, Mr. Doon. <clears throat> I don't know if this is for Mr. Jabby or not. The um, retirement increase, do we pay the retirement in arrears every year, or is, or is that for the, the coming year? Go ahead, Terry. Turn your mic on. We pay it monthly based off salary. We, they give us an, an employer um, contribution rate, and it's based off um, our payrolls. But so I mean, it's a percentage so of payroll. So that's based on the current school year's numbers. And Correct. Stuff. It's a projection. We're projecting a 2.5 million increase. And the increase is is because evidently the state they just decide whatever they want to charge us they tell us that's what we have to pay right if if they mismanage the retirement fund they tell us send more it's an actuarial study they have actuaries that calculate what the percentage should be to fund the retirement system okay and we have no say so over that right when, no, we, when we get the, the figure that's what we have to that's no correct. bartering or anything <laughs> like that that's correct thank you <laughs> thank you miss Court. any other questions by board members seeing that I have one mr. Jabby when you were talking about the pay raises and um, we talked about the amount of the one-time stiping that we got last year compared to what our increase was in our MFP for this year that wasn't quite enough money to cover the increase in the MFP doesn't cover the pay raise cost is that correct um, I'll have to let Miss Araby answer that, does it? Okay. Are you talking about what we got last year? Or for last year, because of the decision that was made by the board to include even our uncertificated in that amount, it, um, it, it wasn't quite enough to cover the certificated as well as the uncertificated for that one-time stipend that was paid out. But because now that that we went to the 775 as a base salary that amount of money is also exceeds what the increase was in the MFP for this year that that's correct but it's going to be the additional revenues that we'll be getting that will be able to suffice that uh, as we were working through the I understand the but it's almost like another unfunded mandate that's that kind of came to us even though the state said this is what we're going to do for your teachers but now we're not going to fund it completely, so it's up to the local government again to step up and completely fund it. That's correct. That was my point. And we we funded a non-certificated as well. Absolutely, I understand. I mean, yeah. we we held our end of the deal up again, 
and that's I, my point. If I could, Mr. Durham, before we close, I did want to make note of our health insurance um, decrease um, in cost. It certainly says a lot of the work we've been doing with our employees, and I, you know, I thank their employ our employees for those efforts as well. And we're encouraged by those numbers, and hopefully that's a trend that we can continue as we move forward in our health insurance costs, especially when you look in light of what's going on with the um, state groups at this current time with their health insurance. Right. Many people are experiencing a double-digit increase. Absolutely. So hopefully, and we we have another reevaluation that's going to come July. July. We'll put our so numbers. we'll see where our numbers are then. Correct. All right. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry for, to digress there. Um, any other comments by board members or questions? Any comments or questions by the public? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, moving on to item six, administrative. Mr. Jabby, our monthly maintenance and custodial report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Derman. The monthly maintenance and custodial summary is in your packet. Mr. Singletary and his staff is here to answer any questions if you have. Any questions for Mr. Jabby and his staff? Seeing none, great job, guys. Uh, item B is monthly risk management report. That report is also in your packet. Mr. Gaspard is here if you have any questions. Any questions by board members? Seeing none, item C, monthly transportation report. Yes, sir, and that report is also in your packet. And Miss Amy is here mm -hmm. if any of you have any questions. Any, yep, Miss Pelissario. I just wanted to tell Miss Amy how impressed I am that 5,000 people used our transportation hotline. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Ms. Seeley. As with everybody in the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. there are always some little glitches, and I would like to also thank Miss Amy for um, um, taking care of these glitches at, you know, very promptly. and. Um, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Javi. You did a great job. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Item seven is construction. Ms. Tipton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Derman. Our first item is recommends acceptance of Covington High School re-roofing of main building phase three as substantially complete subject to architect's recommendations, submission of all regulatory requirements, and approval of Superintendent Foles. <coughs> St. Tammany Parish School Board Project Number 1472. So moved. moved by Mr. Luke, second. second by Ms. Heinz. Any questions or comments by board members? By the public? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? So ordered. Thank you. Well, Thank you got you. a short um, list. Huh? Our She's second item is the monthly construction report. I'll <laughs> give you a brief update. We have um, a signed contract for the Madisonville Elementary Classroom Wing project, and we are scheduling a pre-construction meeting um, in the next couple of weeks. The Clearwood Junior High Addition and Renovation Project is advertised for bids, and we had a pre-bid meeting last week on August the 28th, and we expect to receive those bids prior to the October board meetings and bring those to you. Fountain Blue Junior High and Covington High project documents are being finalized to be advertised for bids, and we anticipate receiving those bids prior to the November meetings. We have and we are meeting with uh, design teams to review progress sets of design drawings and specifications. We've in been including school, maintenance, IT, food services staff as appropriate. We've done that and have some scheduled, including schools Punch Train Chifuncta, Addition, Slidell Junior High and Bonnie Cole Elementary HVAC projects, Carolyn Park Middle School cafeteria renovation, Shatima Elementary Administration Addition, Lyon and Mandeville Elementary Additions, North Shore, Pearl River, and Slidell High renovations. We also um, know that our designers are working on Mandeville Junior and Abney Elementary to continue that the progress on those design documents. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've started or we have scheduled um, <coughs> the process to talk to the school's principals 
and central office staff to discuss needs for each school relative to Lancaster and Mayfield. So we should have some information on that um, soon. We are also proceeding with the process to annex Boyette Junior and Little Oak Middle School's property into the city of Slidell so that we can connect the utilities for these schools into municipal water and sewer services. And last but not least, uh, Woodlake Elementary Project is progressing and the completion contractor Kevin J. Smith Construction is on schedule. Their duct work is installed, they've ordered the HVAC unit, the window sills are being replaced and masonry work is in progress. And we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Any question? Yes, Mr. Betancourt. Ms. Tipton. <coughs> Has that the the company that the surety company assigned that to Kevin J Smith? Have they worked for us before? Yes, sir. They have. They are St Tammany Parish um, contractor, I believe, out of Lacombe, and they have done projects for us previously. They did us a, a renovation job at Mandeville High School, and they're doing a small project at Salmon High right, uh, right now. Well, we were in the discussion with the Thank surety. You. We were uh, we were excited about the, to have them on board, and yes, sir. certainly made it more comfortable for us when it's part of the discussions when their name were brought up. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bedencourt. Ms. Seeley. Thank you, Mr. Derman. I'm excited to see this um, Pearl River High School. We put that on there just for you, Ms. <laughs> Seeley. <laughs> the architect, architect's rendition of um, his ideas and, and what it looks like. And I'm looking forward with anticipation to seeing this project completed as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions from board members? Mr. Dermot, if I could, I, I just want to touch base one more time on the sewer and water and our decision with Boyette and Little Oak. You know, we had exhausted that. I know it's been on the agenda many different times. We looked at as many possibilities as we had, but at the end of the day, the one that was the most financially sound as well as getting the work done as quick as possible was to annex into the city of Slotel because that's the closest tie-in line and the line is, is the least expensive for the school system. So we will now start the process of going before the city of Slotel zoning and those different committees that are required and um, getting that process in place so that we can cross another one of our schools off the list of schools that we're running sewer and water and any opportunity we have to get out of the sewer and water business, um, we certainly want to do that. So I appreciate the efforts of everyone involved, including the city of Slotel, to work with us to uh, make that happen. Thank you, Mr. Folson. We certainly all agree with that aspect of getting out of that type of business. So thank you. Ms. Tipton, thank you again. I know it's been a bit busy summer for you and your staff, so we appreciate all y'all's efforts as well. And so now we're going to move on to item eight, which is the business affairs. Ms. Prevost. To consider and take action with respect to adopting a resolution authorizing ab the advertising for sealed bids for the purchase of general obligation school bonds, series 2014 of St. Tammany Parish Wide School District number 12, of the Parish of St. Tammany, State of Louisiana, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. And Mr. Sluter is here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Grant Sluter with Foley Udell Bond Council. <coughs> the resolution provides for the advertising for 30 million of general obligation bonds, which is the next series of bonds approved by the voters at the last election. Uh, bids would be received at a special board meeting on Wednesday, October 22 at 11.30 a.m. Uh, the proceeds of the bonds would be available for project costs on November 25th. Bond market's very favorable right now. Uh, we conferred with uh, uh, Terry and Cameron and determined that we did need to proceed with the next series of bonds in the amount of 30 million at this time. Thank you, Mr. Schluter. Uh, any questions by board members? All right. Um, if I may get a motion on this item, please. Moved by Ms. Mullet. Second. Second by Ms. Seeley. Any questions or comments by board members? And, and just to clarify, this is to cover 
our next scope of renovations construction that we have uh, that our architects and everybody are working on that we identified in you know several months back correct? absolutely your staff is working very carefully to determine when proposed contract awards will be made when we need to have funds available and then we're uh, scheduling that uh, to make sure that we not only meet those timelines, but we also meet federal tax guidelines on expenditure of tax exempt bond proceeds in a timely fashion. It certainly is a uh, team effort more than ever to make sure construction is talking to finance and Cheryl and Pete and the maintenance as well. So it is everybody working together to um, not only have the projects in line, but make sure that we have the money at, at the right time, not too soon, not too late, Absolutely. to make sure it all fits together. Thank you. That, that's kind of what I wanted to identify for the general public that uh, this is a long, drawn out process, but it has to be very well coordinated. So just wanted to make that point. All right. Seeing no other questions from board members, from the public. Seeing none from the public. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Uh, Ms. Prevost, monthly purchasing report. The monthly purchasing reports in your packets. Ms. Stevens is here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions regarding the purchasing report? Seeing none. We're going to move to item nine, which is announcements from the president. Ms. Heinz. Thank you, Mr. Derman. Uh, the regular board meeting will be held on Thursday, September 11th at 7 p.m. A reception to honor perfect attendance employees for 2013-14 will be held in the atrium prior to the meeting. Uh, I'd also like board members to mark on their calendar Thursday, September 18th, we will be holding expulsion hearings that evening. And uh, after that, um, well, I guess next week after we vote, we can mark um, October 22nd on our calendar also for a special board meeting. Thank okay. you, Mr. Derman. That's it. Ms. Science, uh, September 18th is going to be my birthday. Can I get a special get out of that meeting? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> Expulsion. I'm used to those. All right. Well, thank you very much. And that concludes our meeting, so we're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>